and I feel like we need to get a receiver. Because y'all got your quarterback. Yeah, we got our quarterback. So now we just got to protect him now. You know what I'm saying? So we need an offensive lineman and we need a receiver. Um, yeah. we, was in the, we, we were actually still in the conversation with getting Debo Samuel from the San Francisco 49ers. You know, as far as him being a number one receiver, I don't know if he's a number one receiver on any team. Nah, he's an all-purpose person, but he's not a number one receiver. Yeah, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, so, I mean, Jeff so. needs so much, the Falcon needs so much. We can really drop back and get more picks. Y'all got a lot of picks where y'all got capital where y'all can negotiate with anybody. Right, right. You know, the Falcons right, can right. really drop back, you know, right. so. It is what it is. So we, made, so, so we made throughout the show, we made keep y'all up to date on what's going on in the draft and whatnot, but definitely today is the hope today. Also, have y'all heard about what Delta Airlines is starting to do now? Delta Airlines will start paying flight attendants during the boarding process. Now, what that means is this, is that they, they only used to get paid when actual people would actually get in the actual seat. Now, during the whole boarding process, now they also get paid for that as well. Good for them, man. Good for them. So now Delta Airlines is the first airline that's actually doing that for the flight attendants. You know what they need? A referee. Why they need a referee? You ain't heard about Mike Tyson. Yeah. Oh! Shit. Mike Tyson stole him. I forgot about Mike Tyson. I forgot about Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Tell us what happened to Mike Tyson. Yeah, so Mike Tyson. Much about Mike Tyson. So it was. Punches. Yeah. <laughs> that thing was, it's like, so it was a dude on the flight who was so, you know what I'm saying, excited. He wanted a picture with Mike Tyson. Michael Blige, you know what I'm saying? But the dude kept picking at him and Tyson on like he was really egging him on. Mike turned around and was he <laughs> dropping watched. them motherfucking D's on him. <laughs> <laughs> Get him, boy. Nigga. <laughs> You imagine you got to sit there with that head. Ain't no ambulance in the sky. Right. You can't call no paramedic. The most they're going to give you is a Sprite, some biscotti cookies, and a band aid. Right. That's you all know how crazy do. you look? Your, your face pulsating. That ain't even. Listen, who going to stop Mike? Mike. <laughs> Mike. Mike don't stop Mike. You lucky this ain't Mike 10, 15, I'm, 20 years ago. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, I ain't stopping Mike. The nigga that was recorded, it was like, you should have should have never gave you niggas a laugh. <laughs> right, right, right. Like Cat Williams right. said, you shouldn't have been talking shit. Right. Niggas, I know right. niggas about like, damn, stop Mike, okay. <laughs> he did it. Hey, that's enough, Mike. That's all they can do. Mike, hey, did you see him looking back at the camera too? You like, Mike. <laughs> Every time. It's not? No. Nah. 
It's not. It's a male. Holy yeah. shit! He's, a, he's, a a he's like a pop artist. Yeah, it's like, a male, dog. It's again, a, once again, I didn't know. I thought this ain't really our conversation. I don't think. I don't think <laughs> this is. But good for that brother, man. I mean, hey, do you? You know what I'm saying? I thought you were talking about uh, what's the Cash Me Outside girl name? In her name, bad something. Uh, bad baby. Yeah, bad baby. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I thought you were talking about her. That's what I thought. Also, today marks the 20th year anniversary that Lisa left out Lopez. Lopez passed away 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The left out You know what I'm saying? Also, we want to shout out our condolences to Andrew Wolfolk's family. He passed away at the age of 71. He actually was first with it, fired saxophone. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, he yeah, actually passed that. away and whatnot, man. <coughs> and uh, last, we want to definitely say uh, the Brooklyn Nets got swept. The only team that got the swept. The only team that got swept. In the first so how do you get swept with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on your team? I don't know. I don't watch. They also got Ben well. Simmons on their team. <laughs> <laughs> we did not play. Do you count that? <laughs> no, no. Do you count that? I said no lie, though. He is on hey, the team. They already talking about training them already. Damn. Me and Ben Simmons got the same amount of points this whole series. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm matching him. Hey. Rebounds, assists, all that. Hey, but that nigga can be dressed though. That nigga can dress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all out like a Starburst. <laughs> <laughs> that uniform was black and white though. <laughs> right. Right. When they went to the New York Miss game, he weren't all green, but they, his team weren't all black. Nigga, what the fuck you doing? We're going for the Celtics. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And that's what's going on in the world today. That's your hot topics right there, man. And real quick, let me get to the birthdays. Lizzo! Lizzo B! Go on, big girl! 34 years old! What's your what's, 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 what's you at the thing last night? What? You said it was Lizzo? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you saw somebody that looked like, like Lizzo. <laughs> Do your thing, girl. And them thongs or whatever. Uh, speaking of big talent, <laughs> seventh entertainer birthday. Turn 58. You talented person. Yeah, okay. I talk about physical. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, second entertainer turns 58 this week. Speaking of black, Akon turns 49 this week. Nobody right. say they're my black. <laughs> Nothing. 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 I, I, I'm trying to see where that transition was. Is second entertainer not black? Burn him at black though. Yes, he yes. said it at the funeral. That is true. Akon birthday. That's hilarious. Akon's black. African. Black Speaking of African. <laughs> Luke Get it up! Give us free! <laughs> Give us we free! Give us free! <laughs> I'm a star birthday! <laughs> What's his name? His name is Digimon. <laughs> Who's <laughs> Digimon? <laughs> oh, that nigga ain't got a nigga. I'm a star. I'm a star birthday. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. That brother turned 58 as well. What other movies was he in? He was in uh, one of the Fast and the Furious. 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 Fast and the Furious. Oh, man. He was one of them artists that was in Fast and the Furious. Oh, man. Yeah, he was in the one with The Rock, I want to say. The first one, The Rock. Mm, he was a bad guy. What was his name? He got killed in the. I'm a I'm star. A star. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Y'all know who the hell I'm talking about. He been in shit you seen. You must be free. Oh man, y'all not gonna play that man like he getting fucked over in all his movies because he, he get his little moments and then he out. So uh, speaking of actor, he's an actor getting fucked over. Derek Luke, Antoine Fisher. Just talking wow. about Antoine Fisher. How that how that wrote. Anyway, Antoine Fisher, Derek Luke turns forty eight. Oh. What's up with that nigga lip, man? That nigga did talk. I don't know why he talked like that. Like, it's, it's, well, he did it in uh, Notorious because he was trying to be nitty. Yeah. But then we, but he was talking just like that at Antoine Fisher too. Yeah. yeah, maybe that was part of the role, man. Maybe that's what he, you know, got into when he was doing the thing. I don't know. Maybe his character just had allergies. <laughs> it's just stupid. Um, so I have no transition for this one actually. <laughs> Y'all remember Zarya from the Parenthood? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. She got a birthday, 42. A legend in the game. How old? 42. Damn, 42, right. But y'all thought she was younger or old? Yeah, I thought she was younger. I thought she was younger. No. Yeah, I thought she was younger. Damn, damn, damn. Hell yeah. I remember that shit, like. Right. That's when I first really saw Phase All Love. That y'all first time? Yeah, yeah. That was a long, that was a long. Damn, it was probably like, late. Late. Phase has always been fat. All the time. Hey, that nigga was fat as a motherfucker, Big Mo, 
Why is it? Bam. You know what I'm saying? When he was in uh, his room dancing with that chicken. That nigga, I'm away. Hold on, what movie was that? Big Mama, Big Mama House. Big Mama oh, House. Oh, okay, okay. Three? I try to forget that. Like Father and Son. Yeah, the like one that really did. Yeah, that's yeah. probably why. Yeah. <laughs> Big Mama, I would have accepted three strikes. You know, I see that one. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to watch three strikes, man. That shit ain't nowhere. Is that on AKG?
I was making a brand that wasn't just selling clothes and it just wasn't just selling like one particular item and I got it, had to get clear about like how do I want women to feel when they shop with me? Like what do I want them to look for and them to achieve? And that idea of like beautiful thinking came back and like being able to communicate your true self with your audience and people receive it. And so it just made sense that wow. I... Um, wow, that's deep. Hey, that is deep, man. Well, yes. sir, well, well, congratulations on opening it and you. running it. Looks Thank good you. in there. That is Thank awesome. You. So, so how long have you been in business? Okay, so I've had the brand, Unoya, for about two and a half years. Prior to starting the brand, um, I had like a lifestyle blog daily by Nikki D. So most of like my platform subscribers or like Instagram or all that, a lot of them came from that. Um, and so when I started the brand, I originally started to do just stationery because at the time I was doing graphic design and stuff. So the brand started with just like planners, journals, that type of thing. Oh, okay. um, and then as that grew, I was like, hey, I don't just want to do stationery, I want to do other things too. So then I added in accessories that I was like designing and stuff because I was really into that. Um, and then when those things kind of took off too, I'm like, I don't want to just do that either. I want some more. <laughs> so then I added in like um, bath and body care products or self care products because that was a big thing for women at the time. And then apparel and clothes was like the last element we added to the brand. So, um, Full, fully formed, I would say the brand's been live and running for about two years, but I've had the blog for about five. Okay, wow. okay. Yeah. Wow. So do you kind of cross-reference your blog with stuff that's coming out? I used to. I used to a lot. I don't have time anymore, to okay. be completely honest. My life is like... Um, Kind of like a shit show a lot of the time. <laughs> so I, I really, it's every every month I put on my list, like it's my goal to reactivate my blog. But I feel like when I do it now, it's going to take a different shape because I'm not who I was five years right. ago. My life looks completely different. And so I feel like if I do the blog again, it's going to be like a reiterate, new iteration of the blog. Like guest speakers, guest um, women coming in to write, um, more kind of like a guide and less blog. Okay, I got you. Now, is there something with your business that you got going on that you're still striving to do or add to your business? I think as far as like product categories, so we sell apparel, accessories, stationery, and novelty gifts. Um, I don't think I can add any more. <laughs> I, I, I feel like my brain and my mental health is t telling me not to add anything else. However, I think like aspiring forward, supporting other small businesses is a really big part of my brand. So out of the store, we sell over 396 original products, like individual products, which is a lot. Um, out of those, I would say 30% of them are designed by me in-house, um, like I start from start to finish, but then the rest of it is actually um, from other small businesses. So we have a program where we amplify other black owned businesses by women um, and sell their products in our store as well. So wow, that's any, amazing. yeah, so girls who are um, creating, you know, bath and body care products, stationery, whatever, we're big about selling their products in our store as long as they kind of align with our mission. Um, right, they gotta meet your guidelines. They gotta meet our guidelines, they gotta meet our mission. I have to make sure it's something that our customers are gonna like, they're gonna vibe with. Um, I can't just sell like bundles. Right. But that, that's huge though because, I mean, although we're an all-male podcast, yeah. most of our listeners and viewers are female. Really? Yeah, really, because we talk a lot about relationships and things like that. So the fact that your brand is about beautiful thinking it makes sense that you would bring other people in. Right, I think I can't well do that. As well as self care and all that stuff. I yeah. can't do everything. Like yeah. I, I feel so. like amplifying other black women, black owned businesses is such a big thing for me personally. And I remember when I was first starting, nobody helped me. Like yeah. zero, right. zero people. Um, and although I think that's a big part of business and you should never expect that, I remember feeling like, wow, it would be really great if I was able to connect with other business owners who were going through right. the same thing. So with right. the girls selling in the store, we do that, but we also do events and stuff to encourage them to like interact with each other, meet each other, and network with each other. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, because I've been seeing that sometimes you be going live and whatnot, and you be trying to give other upcoming business people mm -hmm. advice. Right. And you know what I'm saying? And me, honestly, I be tapped in, like, oh, let me see what she got to say, because, you know, we got our business that we do right here. I'm like, okay, let me see what she's talking about. And you be definitely giving some great advice. Thank you. Know? you. So Thank I mean, yeah, even though your stuff is geared toward women for some of your products, the, just the business aspect of seeing you move is inspirational to, you know, whoever's watching. You know, I love really. that. It's so weird.
because it's like when I go and do pop-ups and stuff, the first thing I always get is men being like, so why you won't sell no man products? You got a problem with men or something? I'm like, like they take it mad serious. I don't, I don't understand that. <laughs> like they take I don't it really because, serious. You know what I'm saying? If you got somebody special in your life, that's the perfect place to go. Like when I, okay. when my wife comes up here, sometimes she looks in the door like, dang, I wish she was open right now. Because yeah. it's a lot of stuff in there that catch her eyes. So. Not only that, quit hating. I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's niches right. and stuff. You know right. what I'm saying? So oh, if this ain't for you, it ain't for you. Like, like if you go to a football store, you'll be like, well, where the soccer shit at? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's the football store. Take your ass to the soccer store. <laughs> right. well, technically, right. football. You got a good one. Maybe it was a bad example. I should have went tennis or something. <laughs> I should have went to Oh, man. So, so would you be interested, because like he said, you know, would you be interested if someone maybe came to our show at this time, knowing that your shop is closed, and they worked out something with you where you could maybe, like, open it just for them to go in there? Oh, yeah, we definitely do exclusive shopping. Um, it's not even, like, a who's who thing. Like, really, if you just hit me up, um, we'll make it happen. I think a big thing, too, with new business owners, a lot of people don't realize that there's so many people who do e-commerce. Like, they sell right. online. They launch a product. They ship it out. They do the content and whatever. Um, I didn't even know this, but owning a brick-and-mortar location, no, no matter how big it is, is a whole different beast. I feel like me now owning my space for a little over a year and a half, like, I fucked up so much stuff. I really wasted so much money all the time. And it's not just the money part of it. I think there's such a nuance between owning a physical space and everything that goes into it. For example, like when people walk in the store, I want them to have an experience. That's what the brand's really about. So from the door to the, to the back wall, I want you to really get the experience and understand the brand. Um, when I was just online, I didn't have to do that. Like, I didn't have to yeah. think about price tags. I didn't have to think about hang tags. I didn't have to right. think about how people check out or what shopping bag they get, no. like, or fitting rooms wow, or all of yeah. these different things. And so I think running a business online is hard, just period. And then when you add in, like, trying to give someone an in-person experience that they, it's memorable and that they want to yeah, come back, it yeah, becomes back. even more complicated. Absolutely, absolutely. People, if you're an upcoming business owner or even thinking about being a business owner, man, listen to what she's saying. This is Nikki Duncan, y'all. She's giving y'all that knowledge. You feel me? So how can people be down if they say, you know what, I'd love to have, you know, my product, their process, their website, yep. like, how does that, how does that work? There is, there is. So we, we try to keep things real streamlined, real. I'm very good, like type A, if you cannot tell. Right. It's a little type A, just a little bit. Yeah. So, okay. 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 A little type A. So um, there's definitely a process. If you go on my website, you know, lifestyleco.com, or if you're on Instagram, you hit the link in the bio. There's actually a button that says like sell your products in our store. And so they have to fill out an application. They have to send me pictures of like their stuff. We usually set up a call, and if they like it and it vibes, then we go from there. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you a question. You've been on reality TV. I have. How was, how was that experience? Like, you know what I'm saying? I've never had the opportunity to be on reality TV. So how was that experience just being net on reality mm. TV? I think reality TV sucks. Wow. <laughs> that's, <laughs> all, that's all, folks. That's all. You're talking about watching it or being on it. Like, do you watch it? No, like... absolutely not. I think because I've been on the other side of it, I definitely don't watch it because it, it's not real, right? right like, it's know. not real. Real. It's it's wrong. very scripted. Like for example, you could ask me that question, I could answer it how I want. But if this was a reality TV show, they'd be like, "Put a pin in that." So I hear your emotion, <laughs> but how do you really feel? And now you said right. shit ten right. times, and you're like, "Well, fuck, how do I feel?" I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> so people get irritated. That's yeah, why so many fights and shit. Correct. No. And then you're like, they're not feeding you. They're giving you alcohol uh, all day. You've been there for twelve hours. You don't even like these fucking people. It's a lot, right? So. <laughs> to New York, I had no job, um, and I think I was really naive 
to like what it was about. Like I was newly married, I was trying to bring like income and stuff, I was trying to get my new married life established, and my partner had been on TV for years. So he had a whole different acclimation than I did. Um, and then it's like they people lie. People tell whatever they want to tell. They promise you the moon. I remember it was like, hey, we only need you for a few episodes, and then um, it will just be something, something light, something light. It wasn't like at all. And not just that, I think like they they really kind of like put me in a spot. And when you don't know that you have options, you tend to just accept whatever people feed to you. So at the time, it was like, well, if you don't do it, he can't do it. And this is someone who had been on TV for five plus years before I even met them. And it's like as a new wife, telling someone's new Thank wife, you. like, you're going to end his career if you don't do it. The it's level like, of, oh, I got no correct, correct. I but I took advantage of your situation. Very much yeah. so. And I, and I think looking back, I'm not a victim. I definitely, I, I made the decision to do it. Nobody forced me to, but you can only do the best you can with the information that you have. As you grow and as you evolve, you'd be like, fuck, I really shouldn't have done that. That was really dumb. You actually couldn't have done that. I know my rights. And yeah, I didn't learn anything from I learned not to do that. I learned not to do that. Look, cause I, cause I was thinking that, you know, when you were actually in reality TV, I was thinking that people enjoy it. You know, they're getting caught on camera. They may want to get into the acting side. They may want to become a rapper. Like all reality people always say they're a rapper, you know what I'm saying? So I thought people was enjoying that. Some people it gives do. More exposure. Yeah, some people do. Um, my advice is to really make sure you understand your rights, right? Like sometimes when we get into these things, we feel like it's like I gotta accept whatever they tell me to do, and they said to say this, I gotta do it or whatever. First and foremost, you are valuable. You are a valuable asset. If they're coming to you and, and pitching you about a show or you're on a show, you already in the script. You already you already there. So don't let anybody make you feel like you gotta shuck and jive for a check. I mean, I think a lot of times, whatever your financial situation is, it can seem like, oh my God, I'm going to get paid how much per episode? Work? Oh. Right. It's not like that. I think the second point is um, to definitely make sure that you have a plan. You have an exit plan. Because I think where a lot of people also get caught up is they start doing it and they get so accustomed to the money and they don't set up any foundation on the back end to be able to sustain. What if I don't want to do this anymore? Yeah, exactly. Are you working on a business? Are you banking off just being able to get clout or followers, etc., from the show? What are you doing to invest into yourself so you don't need these people? What if it, what if it ended today? Right. What would you Nothing do? is yeah. guaranteed. Yeah, you got to make it work. Right. Nothing is guaranteed. And I think the third thing, too, is like, get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Read your contract. Oh, you don't good. like something, be like, yo, pause. I don't like this. I don't give a fuck what you're talking about. Like, I'm right. not doing that. Yeah. Um, you have rights. And make sure you understand that at the end of the day, I don't care how nice producers are to you, they don't like you, they're not your friends, it's a job for them. So make sure you understand that you carry yourself in a way like it is a business, it is a job. Right. That makes sense. Because I mean, I say that with regular jobs. Like, yeah. They call me. Right. So I, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Right. Right. Deal with it. Now, do you get, you ever get like recognized or anything? Or do people look at you funny? Like, I can tell they, or do people recognize you from the show? Sometimes. Sometimes. Not that often. And my favorite thing they say is, oh my God, you're so pretty in real life. Or, you look so different now. Or, you're actually really cool. And it's like, all of those are not compliments. I'm just letting you know. What does that mean in real life? Right, right. It was a reality show in real life. So I was ugly on TV. That's it. None of, none of these things are compliments, but when I, when I do, it's usually that. Um, honestly, I, I get to meet more of like followers or people who have followed the blog or are supporters of the brand. Those are my favorite people to meet, honestly. Okay. So let me ask you this. Anything positive or good comes from it? Hmm. That's a good question. It is a good question. I think... The positive thing is I would not have started my brand if I was not trying to rebuild my life from reality TV. I think that it evolved me as a woman. It made me realize where I had a lot of shortfalls around my confidence and my self-esteem. It allowed me to really learn like, hey, I do have value. I am important. I can stand up for myself. I don't have to do what somebody else is telling me to do. And until you've been in positions to combat that, you, you may think you do. Um, I think I wouldn't be as strong as I am or, or really just as clear-minded on what I'm about if I wouldn't have done it. But it, didn't, it did not bring me any real, like, substance. Right. But I mean, you know, it's motivation. Yeah. I mean, even negative motivation, motivation. That works. Okay. You know what I'm saying?
saying? So what's what's next for Nikki? You know what I'm saying? Like what is Nikki striving to do? Maybe you're on her bucket list that she ain't accomplished yet that she's still striving for. Shit, I'm so young. So <laughs> 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 um, no, I think I really want to continue to grow and scale the, the business. I think in the next few years I really want to get like a ground floor storefront. You know, I'm on the third floor and that kind of caps a lot of traffic that I get. So I do have to rely a lot on social media to bring in traffic. And it would be really nice to be able to have a space where people can walk by and, and you know, come in. So I think definitely maybe um, growing into a bigger space would be a thing. I also am really stepping into like teaching now. Um, I have an actual social media content class on May 14th here in Atlanta okay. um, where I'm going to be teaching people how I actually create content on social media for my business, how I use social media to drive sales in my business, what tools I use to do it all. Um, most people don't really, like I shoot all my own photos for the brand, I always have. So I've, I've never used a photographer, I've never used a videographer, I kind of taught myself and I think that having business owners the ability to like teach them how to do the same is something I really want to do. Okay. So kind of okay. dive more into the teaching and, and helping space. So say it again, what you say you're doing on May 14th and let people know when, what time, where they can actually be a part of what you're teaching. Right, right. so May 14th we're having a social media content class where you can learn ways that you can create content for your business, your brand, or personally. Um, that actually converts to sales. How do you build an aesthetic? How do you create content that doesn't drive you crazy and ruin your life? How do you, how do, you do it seamlessly where it feels authentic to you? It's going to be here in Atlanta, um, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you're interested in attending, you can hit me up on Instagram. Yo, I, I went to karaoke, the first time I went to karaoke, 
karaoke. I was in New York, and I went and I tried to sing that song. But I'm actually like super. I'm not shy, but I feel like I'm not a. I don't know. I'm not like a people person. I don't know what the fuck wrong with me. I don't know. But I was so terrified, like singing, and there was like three people in there. I was just like, thank you guys so much for coming. <laughs> like I was like so awkward. I don't know if he has the. Well, well, if you went to karaoke with us, we'll make you feel right at home. Yeah, we, <laughs> okay. we have a ball, you know what I'm saying? We should, you, should, you shouldn't really be good at karaoke. Really? It's because supposed to be the fun. The person who went before me was like, oh. like Whitney Houston. <laughs> there was like really good. <laughs> and then I was just that like, one. well, that one. give it up for her. <laughs> like, it was so bad. Kind of croon the audience and shit. Right. Like, and, and, and he always <laughs> wants to go first. Like, man, I got to go behind. You know what I'm saying? We trying to bullshit out here. We're drinking. We just having fun. <laughs> okay, so if a movie was made of your life, mm -hmm. what genre would it be and who would play you? Mm, I don't know what genre. So I think it would definitely be like a romantic comedy. I really like dry humor. Like it has to be like, I like really dry humor that most people don't think is funny. I find hilarious. So it'd have to be something like that. Maybe like, um, like the office type of thing. Like the office yeah. type of thing. Like one of my favorite movies is The Breakup. Have you ever seen it? Breakup. Oh, no. With uh, Jenny Fox and uh, Morris Chestnut? No. I'm mad and then 
by the end of the day, I'm like, I'm so glad I did that. I'm so fucking productive. Like, excuse me, I woke up at six. Like, I really feel good about it. Um, but I, I can stay up really late. Like, once I'm up, I'm up. So if I had to pick one, I'd probably be like, stay up late. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Now you're from the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Like, tacos or seafood? Oh, tacos. All bad tacos. bitches don't like seafood. I was just they lying. <laughs> they lying. Yeah, they lying. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, no, no. If I have a seafood bowl in here and some tacos. Bowl? Boy. Bowl. Bowl. Oh, how you say it? Boy. I say boil, too. You I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> if I had a seafood <laughs> <laughs> and I had some tacos. I guarantee the crab legs would disappear <laughs> expeditiously. <laughs> the reason I have problems with seafood bowls is because I feel like I don't want to work for my food. And I feel I like that. like I the dirtiness, that. the gloves, the wet wipes, the, the lemon, it's, it gives me anxiety. Like, I'm like, what? which, which step you got, is you gotta first? You got to clean up every, after every bite, you got to clean every up like the bite, the, the butter dripping down your arm. <laughs> Go in. I have tried to, and then I feel like if you're not good at like seafood buckets, bowls, um, <laughs> if you're not good at them, and you go with people who are like connoisseurs of this, they look down on you. Like, hey, you go in. I would do that. You ain't good at that. They gonna look at you like, like they don't know what they do. Right. It's just, just like you saying like, you don't play spades. Oh my God, yeah, you get one. clowns. Like, <laughs> I, you play spades? I played it. Twice, and I didn't know what my partner carried the whole time. Like, I can't do it. Like, I can't. Don't let it's them shame you on hard. this. I know that people are going to watch this and be like, you know it's because she lies skin. It's just, it's just you put out the highest car in the in, in the shape. In the suit. If I put out a, a, a two of heart, you put out a higher heart. And you okay. win. This it's is the it. easiest explanation someone's ever gave me. Because most people, when you play space with them, they'd be like, just do it. Just do it. You don't know it. What's wrong with you? They get that's, and he's like, get up from the table, just get up. That's so. how that's like one of your friends talking oh, to you. Like, man, oh the problem. No, that's all it is. Theoretically, it's real easy. But you got to remember <laughs> yeah. the shit that happened. Because if you don't, them. they on your ass. Yes. You also yes. play to win. Hey. That's, that's the most important. If you're thinking about it, just do it. Hey. Just do it. I'm going to tell you another a major key thing we missed out on space as well is that you got to know your hand. So just because you find you got that to the heart, and you're like, oh, this tin go ride. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. I ain't never no. counted the tin. No, 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 no. no. Y'all niggas put that much energy in your business like she do. <laughs> yeah, maybe you meet somewhere like us in the same thing. That's the problem, y'all. Why don't worry about me and crab leg? And who can play spades? Just get your ass in here and get a business deal. Won't he do it? The church has said. I'm possibly, ladies and gentlemen. Like, I'm 
ninety cents at the store. Yes, that's what she talking about. Chicken flavor. What's wrong with that? What's the best way to eat? Okay, the best way. Break it down. What's the best way to eat? What you talking about? You heard it. No, no. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Okay, okay. Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? Break it down. What's the best way to eat? What's good, everybody? It's your girl MJ. We rocking with another dope episode of As Told by MJ. We got Duca in the building, you guys. I basically designed the world we live in. Anything from branding, marketing. Uh, I call it a three-headed dragon. Okay. You know, because there's a lot of people that can't do all three, but but you doing that? I do all three. Like they didn't offer you no options. You like the top They really 
No, it's like I just never drank milk. My mom told me that when I was two years old, I used to always like throw my bottles in the back seat. And California is really hot. She said I would get back there and then I'd pick one up and drink it. Well, I did, and it was sour. And she said I'd never drink it ever again. Wow. Ever again. Even the thought of it makes me sick. Oh, no cereal. No that cereal. Was, no, no milk. That California sun. It was probably it's chunky. different than that. This mm-hmm. Atlanta sun. Nigga, it is a new dry eat over mm-hmm. there. So, so what was what was the um, best place that you lived there that you enjoyed? Was it California, New York, or here? You know, I love New York. I want to move back. I really want to um, open a store in New York, and like in the next five years, like success for me. Some people aspire to have like big warehouses and big stores and all of this, and I've thought a lot about this. But I feel like for me, success looks like being able to open a store in New York, Philly, keep Atlanta, and California. Um, probably in LA actually. Um, and being able to operate them like I operate my current store and have the merchandise be really reflective of the region and the area and being able to travel and like do dope stuff. But Would you still be hands on in that case? Yo, I was just talking to somebody about this and they were like, you can't do everything. I'm just like, what say, are you going to do? You do? Have a team or you doing I right? delegate some of that? So <laughs> right now I have two staff that I couldn't do anything that I do without them. They're amazing. Um, I still do two? way too Just much. two? Just two. You want all those stores. I mean, no, right now I have two. Have right now I have two. But in the future, yeah, I would hope that I can build a team of people that is as passionate about the brand as I am, um, supporting women, supporting self-confidence, and then they would kind of run. I don't, I haven't fleshed this out, so it may not work. But New York is definitely a vibe. But it's a dream. You always keep your dream. You yeah. Always, you never let your dream go set until someone you can't do the dream. And you know, whatever you, you know. put out into the atmosphere, that's what it is. Because right. life and death is in the power of the tongue. Right. So it's better to say, I will have all these stores going and being successful rather than I, I'm not sure. That's definitely true. Because it's like when I close my eyes, I can see it. Like, you I can see, see it. it. Right. And it's like, I might. Sometimes we get so hung up in, like, that how or what does it look like. Okay. But it, that's really a because the how will come to you. I always say, like, the answers are in the same room as the question Dang at all points of time. Boy, y'all over here talking, boy. Y'all you just, and, you, and you just had a uh, hash brown, boy. Hash yes. brown. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you brought the story up. Yeah. You, you just had a, uh, an event just recently, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell us about that event. So a big part of the brand, too, we, we like to encourage women to interact with each other, self-esteem, self-confidence, and just co-working. Um, so we started doing events at the store. The first event that we did, we did a vision board party, which was really, really fun. Um, and then this last event we did was around International Women's Day, and it was um, kind of like a paint and sip, but times 10. Instead of them painting canvases, they painted vases. And then we actually had all these fresh flowers for them, and they were able to make their own flower arrangement. It was like, give yourself flowers. Oh, wow. That's dope. That's excellent. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, Nick, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, we appreciate you stopping by. Thank you for having me. It was fun. I appreciate it. You guys are like my first, like, official podcast situation. We're glad to be the first. Yeah. You know know what was this? You hear it still out there. Yes. we finished to give you the full experience okay. since you said that. So we do have a couple more segments that we would like for you to participate in. Really? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure? yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to hold them. You know what I'm saying? So, so we call this segment Who's Captain? He's going to explain the rules, you know what I'm saying, about how it works and things like that. Um, All right, so this part of the show is called Who's Captain? Uh, I give you two articles, two excerpts from an article, and you have to Guess whether it's all cap, all fact, or if both are fact, or if one is fact and one is cap. Okay. That's why I call it who's cap. Okay. So, title of the first story is Bunny Bash. Bunny Bash. It's about to be real stupid. I'm just going to bring you out. Peeps, the family operated candy company, have announced after their 70 year run. They are throwing in the towel due to harsh backlash. The CEO stated the last straw was when he received a life-threatening letter by mail to his family. Bunny bash. Did you say what now? Wait, was it PETA? No, Peeps. No, but who sent him the letter? PETA? No, it doesn't say who. It's all in the details, right? <laughs> right, right, it's, right. It's, it's only... But he only gives us a little... See, we don't know either. I can't yeah, we, we don't know either. Oh so he only gives us a little, and we got to figure out if he just made this shit up or if it's or an actual-ass story. I think it's true. 
No, but you gotta hear the second story. I gotta, I gotta okay, hear the second story. I'm gonna do this whole thing. I don't play spades. I can't do this. <laughs> you, got you got spades figured out now with the little bit I gave you. It, it goes along. I have you on my team. Okay. You, know, you wouldn't be on my team. <laughs> I have to see you play a little bit first. Then I'm like, okay, she good. Okay, story number two Comic Cross. Comic Cross. At a recent Comic Con, directors and producers revealed that there will be a DC and Marvel crossover coming in the year of 2024. Comic Cross. Okay, so first, I'll read the first one one more time. Story number one, Bunny Bash. Peeps, the family operated candy company, have announced after their 70 year run, they are throwing in the towel due to harsh backlash. The CEO stated the last straw was when he received a life-threatening letter by mail to his family. All right, so are they both cap is one true, one false? Both of them cap, both of them true. Are we guaranteeing victory, Darrell? You got your cap on. Let's see here. I'm gonna let the guests go first, you know, some of them. I'm gonna see what I you guys I think both are true. I will disclaim it by saying I know absolutely nothing about Marvel or DC. Okay, okay. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and say the first one is Cap, and the second one is also Cap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think they both mm -hmm. bullshit. And that's what makes you why? Because you be bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, bro. <laughs> I'm guaranteeing victory. Mm. The first this one is a hard one. Though. The first one is definitely cap, like the cap of my head. The first one is definitely cap. Uh, Why do you think so? I don't think I don't see them shutting down just because they got a damn letter. You know what I'm saying? I just don't see them shutting down. Cause people get threatened letters all the time, just don't shut down. They still keep their business rolling. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't see them shutting down because they got a threatened letter. Uh, the second one, that definitely is true. I'm gonna tell you why. The LGBT community is strong out here, y'all. What? And they trying to take over everything. What does that have to do with DC and Marvel? Crossover. He just said that. No, he talking about he talking about a DC and Marvel characters in the same movie. Oh, okay, my fault. <laughs> I, 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 I read it wrong. I read it wrong. I read it wrong. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Okay, so like, what is going on? Like cross-dressing. <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> that's your little camping for the day. My bad, my bad. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so you got one ranker for us? I got a ranker. Okay, so we got another segment. This is called Ranker. So this is just allows us to get, you know, some
<laughs> right, right. I, I, I think mine will still be you dead. Think what you got? Uh, McDonald's number one. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we got the McDonald's number one. It's, it's beautiful. I love McDonald's. They have the best McNuggets. I ain't never had no nuggets like them. I don't know what the fuck kind of meat they use. <laughs> it ain't meat. That's, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> it's delicious. I think I'm eating caterpillar. I ain't gonna <laughs> So, <laughs> number two, fuck it. But you don't have to be fucking. Number three, God damn it, this is crazy. I can slap my fucking wall in my ass every day. <laughs> hey, mom. <Ma. laughs> you know what time it is? Setting the mood too. It's the third one. 
a sensual massage. Is she doing? You know, the, you know that's, that, that's, that, that's that new shit. That's that new root body massage. The body massage. Mm. I, Intimate. I was just talking to my wife about that. Them, them Instagram massages <laughs> don't be focused on them, but they ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is where all your pain is. I can't see. 
see this shit, man. And I'm, I'm like, you, I'm tall too, and it's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to maneuver in there. I'm like, man, it's getting cold. You know what? Fuck it. Right. You take your shower, I'm gonna take mine, right. and we're gonna get in this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're gonna meet afterwards and whatnot. That shit. Yeah, uh, number one, massage. Because we already, if you let me massage you, you in the mood already. Yeah. Good job. You know I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> what the first thing a nigga say? Oh, you gotta take these off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me walk. Go on, let you get the cover. <laughs> I can't. You feel my face? I can't. I don't take all this shit. Take your butt ass, Rick. I did. I did. Not for any one reason, but because I'm me. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. the LGBT community gonna love that because they you. dropped the D. Period. 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 Ah, that ill. Yes. Oh man. Moving on. <laughs> Move on, please. Move and on. And I know a lifestyle code. You can find me there on all platforms. There it is, there it is, man. And once again, man, this is Big Talk, Big Game, man. Make sure y'all, make sure y'all remember, man, we got an event going on Saturday, May 14th, the BTBG Showcase, man, at the Globe Bar in oh, yeah. Georgia, man. You know what I'm saying? Make Some sure y'all pull up and turn up. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. It's the same day as your teacher thing. Oh, the 14th. Yeah, okay. It's the 14th. It's at night for seven to 11. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 Definitely pull up. We have a big showcase, have a few artists in. We're gonna have an after party after the wedding, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, so, so also we wanna thank you Aww. for coming to our show. This is my first podcast show. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, you, say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. you didn't say medium, right? Yep, I did. Yep, there it is. There it's it is. big mood friendly. There it is. Very nice. That color go too. That, 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 that pops. That pops. You are so great. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Nice. Appreciate Nikki for coming by, stopping by. Check her out. Check out her store. It's lit. It's lit. It's lit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Once again, man, this is Big Talk, Big Game. Each and every Thursday, we bring y'all this live and entertainment action straight from our mouths. We say what we want to say, and we say the things that people are afraid to say, but they are thinking it, though. Do you feel me? Once again, this is your boy, D-Rail. And I go by the name of Lee. What up? Man, we out of here.